Hi, I'm Andrew Wilson, and welcome to the Approximate Inference in Bayesian Deep Learning Competition at NeurIPS 2021. This video is being recorded at the end of October. The final phase of submissions will be due on November 15th, after which we'll announce the winners of the competition. This competition has a wonderful set of co-organizers, including Pavel Ismailov, Matt Hoffman, Sharad Vikram, Yaren Gall, Ying Zin Lee, Melanie Pradier, Seb Farkahar, Sana Lotfi, and Andrew Fung. All the latest information about the competition is always available at the competition website, which is listed at the bottom of this slide. This competition isn't only about measuring generalization performance. In fact, it's focused on measuring how well various procedures perform approximate Bayesian inference. This is a subtle but crucially important distinction because we need to make sure that the tools we develop perform as they're intended to perform. For example, an optimizer isn't intended to get good performance on a particular benchmark task, it's intended to help us achieve low training loss. And if it can do that reliably well, then it should be useful in a variety of different applications. Similarly, approximate Bayesian inference procedures are intended to provide a faithful approximation to the Bayesian posterior predictive distribution. And we have good reason to believe that if they can do this well, then we can improve generalization in many different settings. Bayesian inference is distinctive because it doesn't just bet everything on a single setting of parameters. It wants to consider all possible settings of parameters weighted by their posterior probabilities, which is reflected in this integral, which is often called a Bayesian model average. Bayesian inference is especially compelling for deep neural nets because these neural nets can represent a wide variety of compelling explanations to a given problem that are often quite complementary with each other, corresponding to different settings of parameters. However, Bayesian inference is intractable for Bayesian neural nets. We can't evaluate this integral in closed form, and so we have to resort to approximation. Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, HMC, is a well-studied MCMC procedure, which we use as a reference. And our HMC procedure is described in detail in this paper, What Are Bayesian Neural Network Posteriors Really Like?, which appeared at ICML 2021. In that paper, it was shown that HMC could outperform a variety of different approaches over a wide range of different architectures and data sets and application settings, regression and classification. Um, different methods included SGD, deep ensembles, stochastic gradient Longman dynamics, and mean field variational inference. However, HMC is extremely expensive. For example, we needed to use 60 million epochs to approximate the posterior of a ResNet 20 on CIFAR 10. And sometimes we needed tens of thousands of epochs, even just for a single sample. To cope with this extraordinary expense, we distributed our computations for up to several weeks sometimes on 512 tensor processing units. So HMC is not practical. This is not something you can run at home. But now that we've expended this computation, we can use it to really try to understand how well a variety of different approximate inference procedures do what they're really intended to do. And early comparisons provide surprising and very interesting results. Deep ensembles, for instance, which are often characterized as non-Bayesian, are often actually closer to this HMC reference than many canonical approximate Bayesian inference procedures. Much closer, for instance, than variational inference in these figures. Stochastic MCMC procedures with cyclical learning rate schedules were typically the closest to HMC so far. So what is HMC and how do we know if it's doing a good job? Hamiltonian Monte Carlo simulates the dynamics of a particle sliding on the plot of the log density function that we wish to sample from. It's inspired by analogies with physics. It's asymptotically exact. It's extremely well studied and understood. And it's been highly successfully used in early work on Bayesian neural nets. Radford Neal in particular has looked very closely into using HMC with neural networks. Unfortunately, it requires exact gradients and it's generally very expensive. It requires full batches. To ensure that we're getting high quality samples with our HMC reference, we ran multiple long HMC chains 
And we applied several MCMC diagnostics, such as the Gelman-Rubin statistic, also known as the R-hat statistic, where we compare the between-chain variants with the average within-chain variants. So those two things should be close together if we're not, for instance, getting stuck in local optima. And it was reassuring that our R-hats were generally pretty close to one in function space, which is all that matters because uh, this, is, this is in prediction space, um, because different weights can give rise to the same functions, and it's the functions that we're using um, to make our predictions. Now, the posterior landscape for neural nets is extremely complex. Uh, so it has multiple different local optima, and um, it even has properties like mode connectivity, where there are these like wormhole-like tunnels, which take us from one SGD solution to another without really changing, changing the training loss or the posterior density. And we've seen that a single chain of HMC is competitive with multiple chains, which is quite reassuring. It means we're probably not getting stuck in local optima. And this is not typically true for um, stochastic MCMC procedures. We also see evidence HMC can pass through low energy tunnels in the posterior landscape, which helps it navigate this really interesting um, loss surface. And there's, there's much more in this paper that I mentioned. The competition has several different phases. So we had a development phase, which started on July 15th. We have an evaluation phase, which started on October 11th and will end on November 15th. And then we'll announce the results on November 25th. The development phase asked participants to um, make predictions on CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100 using a ResNet 18 and on IMDB using a CNN LSTM model. We had several different entries to this phase. The final phase has two different tracks. A light track, which only uses the diabetic retinopathy data set, and it's intended to make um, it easy to participate in the competition, as well as an extended track, which additionally includes CIFAR-10, UCI GAP, and the medical MNIST data sets. In selecting these data sets, we wanted to emphasize medical imaging applications, so applications that would have uh, important real-world relevance. And uh, we also considered in-distribution and out-of-distribution inputs as well as a diverse set of model architectures and problem types, regression classification, et cetera. And some of these data sets are testing quite different things, like UCI GAP, for instance, is testing predictions uh, far away from our training data points. And in that region, we can really test epistemic uncertainty, which is something that Bayesian models are intended to capture. So that's model uncertainty, uncertainty over which solution is actually correct given limited information. And, um, We'll see the biggest discrepancy quite often between Bayesian procedures um, uh, far away from the training data. So we have a submission system where um, participants will submit zip files with predictions on each of the different data sets and um, their submissions will be evaluated in regression using the Wasserstein 2 distance between the two predictive distributions. In this figure here, we look at an exhaustive HMC reference and we compare with deep ensembles and variational inference as we increase the number of samples. And we see that the deep ensembles um, quickly starts to converge to the predictive distribution given by HMC, whereas variational inference is not converging very quickly in this instance. For classification, we considered two different metrics, the agreement between the top one predictions, but also we wanted to consider um, the general correspondence between the full predictive distribution. So we also looked at total variation distance between the two predictive distributions. One of the aims of the competition is to inspire new approximate inference procedures that are comparable to HMC, but much, much more scalable. So we saw that HMC is extraordinarily impractical because it requires so many computations for most problems. So for the top five entries, we'll request code and run it manually to ensure that the runtime doesn't exceed roughly 1,000 SGD epochs, which is about 10 times the standard training budget. We're excited to see the results of the evaluation phase. Winning teams will present their solutions both at the NeurIPS competition track as well as the NeurIPS Bayesian Deep Learning Workshop. After the end of the competition, we'll make all of the HMC samples and predictions public, and the competition and submission system will form a permanent benchmark for approximate inference in Bayesian deep learning to try to understand whether these approximate inference procedures are really doing what they're intended to do. We're looking forward to seeing all the submissions and we're looking forward to meeting you at the competition track. Thank you.